Welcome to another edition of Live View Mastery. Today we're going to be learning about Wallaby, which is a integration testing framework that actually spin it, spins up a version of Chrome and actually clicks around your web browser to test your application. So this is what it kind of looks like. You start off with a session, you visit a URL, fill in fields, you can click buttons and assert that things happen on the page. So let me show you what we're going to be working on today. We have a puppies feature set where you can create and edit puppies in the database. And what we're going to be working on is um, being able to create a puppy where you put in their name, color, and breed, and click save in the database. So I already have this test written. I want to show you how it's going to work and how it spins up Chrome and does all of this testing automatically for us. Here it is. I've slowed it down for your viewing pleasure where it fills in those fields. And this is what we're going to be building today on Live View Mastery Wallaby integration testing via Google Chrome. The very first step that we need to do is that we need to install Chrome Driver. So Chrome Driver allows, uh, it's a process that actually executes Google Chrome and allows our automated testing to be able to command over Chrome and be able to click things in our browser. So I'm going to show you how to install this on a Mac. Otherwise, just Google Chrome, uh, install Chrome Driver on your relevant operating system. So I'm going to show you how to do this on a Mac because uh, Macs, of course, are popular for developers. And um, you're going to need the following commands. You need to do brew tap, homebrew cask. Actually, my command line completion is doing all the steps. So we need to tap homebrew cask, brew install, dash dash cask, Chrome driver. And then finally, this is not going to work unless you quarantine Chrome driver. This is a, um, a well one line. Uh, congratulations, I saved you hours of time. You'll run that last one and Chrome driver will definitely work. So run all those, all three of those commands, install Chrome driver. I already have Chrome driver installed and let's go on to the next step, which is installing Wallaby itself. So we go to our mix.exs file and we're going to add it as a dependency to our application. Specifically, we're going to specify the test environment and set runtime to false. So I'll do mixdeps.get installing the library. And the very next thing now is that we're going to jump over into our test.exs file and we're going to configure uh, our endpoint and configure Wallaby. So the very first thing that matters here is this server false, this standard Phoenix application has the server set to false in the test environment for your endpoint. You need to set this to true, otherwise Chrome is not going to be able to access your Phoenix server it effectively won't be running. The server is set to false by default. So you need to switch that over to true. And then the, your next step is to configure and add lines for configuring Wallaby. So these are the configurations that I have. Uh, the OTP, this is uh, one of our client applications. We're gonna wanna set this to Live View Mastery. Uh, you wanted to set a screenshot on failure, configure it for Google Chrome, and we're gonna set it to headless false. We're gonna set Chrome driver to headless false to be a little bit more entertaining during this demo because we're going to be writing tests and uh, we want to see the browser, but it's going to be, your test suite's going to be much faster if you set this to true in a real environment. So we're going to set it to false for now and we have Wallaby configured. Secondarily, another step in our setup is we need to open up our endpoint file and we need to configure our WebSocket to add the user agent to our WebSocket configuration. So a lot of these things are def well defined in the Wallaby README. So it talks about the reason why we're adding this. Uh, it's also important to make sure the user agent is passed into the connection info in order to allow the database and browser session to be wired up correctly. So that's what we're going to do. Connect info, comma, that doesn't seem right. Okay, that is right. User agent session. And then we're going to take it to our next configuration change, .exs. There's one more piece of setup that we have to do, which is our we need in our test helper, we need to make our test helper wait for Wallaby to start. So we're going to add these two lines at the bottom, which is ensure all the Wallaby um, processes have been started. And then we're going to take our Live View Mastery, or this is going to be your uh, code, your code base's name. Grab the endpoint URL and make it available to Wallaby by setting the Wallaby base URL. So this is, now we're done with our setup and now we're going to uh, start writing our test. So 
if you open our test support folder, you'll notice in the vast majority of Phoenix applications, you always have these uh, data case and con case files that have standard set of configuration when you're spinning up a test that's touching the database or a test that's touching uh, the web application stack through a con case. So we're going to write our own one here. Uh, this is the highest value part of this video. This code that I'm about to add here is also well one, I'm saving you a ton of time with this. So this is the code. Essentially, we're going to use a case template just like we do for a con case and a data case. We're going to be making our own custom one to configure Wallaby. So that's why we need this use EX unit case template. We're going to make the Wallaby DSL available to our test. Uh, so our tests are eventually going to look like this. And we want the, by using the using macro, we're making all of these functions available to us via Wallaby, like filling in text, clicking forms, asserting things are on the page. We're going to be adding that just in a second. I just want to walk you through the rest of this feature case. Uh, we're going to be checking out database worker. I guess that's the right term. And then we're going to be putting our sandbox in shared mode. This is really important for allowing us to do async true on our feature test. And then these three lines are documented in the Wallaby readme where you need to get the metadata uh, from the database, start your session, uh, your actual Chrome driver, passing in the metadata, and then we're going to pass that session into our tests. So this is the most important file here, this feature case. You want to copy this or, uh, you know, take a screenshot and implement that. The very next step is we're going to write our test. So let me show you, or I've already shown you what it looks like, but just to review, we're going to be filling out this uh, puppy form with the name, color, and breed of our puppy and hitting save. And eventually it's going to say puppy created successfully. So let me show you what that test is going to look like. So we're going to create a feature test, test live view mastery web, and we need a features folder there. So we're going to make a directory test live view mastery web slash features. And we're going to add our new test, which is the puppy feature test. Oh, I think I have this, uh, all these things already in my Vim. That's, I'm used to having to copy paste, but I don't have to. I guess I already, it's in my Vim memory. So I'm just walking through this file. Uh, we have async true and uh, we have our fixtures. This is just standard test setup. So I added these sleeps in here. Uh, you have these, you see these process that sleeps because I'm slowing it down for your viewing pleasure. So I'm going to run the test here. We're going to see that this is going to spin up Google Chrome. Check this out. It's going to fill in everything. So let's just see what, how fast this actually works if we get rid of all these sleeps. So it's really fast. And then also what I'm going to do is, remember for your viewing pleasure, I set it where it was actually going to show a headful browser. I'm going to set it, set it to headless true. That test ran in 1.9 seconds. We're going to run it. It's, it's going to spin up Chrome, but it's going to be sending it up, spinning it up in a background process where it's not going to be spinning up Google Chrome. So we're going to see how, the, how much faster that is. So it's actually the same speed. It was 1.9 seconds and now it's 1.8 seconds, but it's a little bit faster. It's always going to be faster when you do headless true, but headless false allows you to be able to easily debug what's going wrong with your test. So now that we have all this set up, uh, the, the reason why I have this at the bottom of the screen here where it talks about signing in, ideally we wouldn't have to go through the sign in page. So this repository that we're working in or this code base doesn't have a sign in step. There's no authentication, but very often the vast majority of applications that we all work on do. So I'm adding this to communicate to everyone that as of my research, I cannot see where we can inject a user token into the session store inside of Google Chrome, which is probably good in terms of a security feature, because if we could, that would be maybe problematic, but maybe not. Essentially, I'm just communicating here that if you were to write these tests in a real application, you would need to log in, fill out the username and password for a user that you uh, create for your application. But all that being said, 
we're going to walk through this. Uh, we have this session, which made, was made available to us from the feature case. So when we spun up our uh, Ecto Sandbox, we made that uh, metadata available to our Wallaby session. We added this OK session. Now that session is being made available because we're using LiveView Mastery Web Feature Case. And because, remember, in our feature case, we quoted and using the Wallaby DSL, that's why these functions have become available to us, which is the, uh, the, the visit function, the fill in function, query.text field. That's the reason why we don't have to alias these things because it's become, it has been made available to us from the feature case. So now we're filling in fields. You can find all of these things at the Elixir Wallaby uh, web readme documentation. So I'm just giving you an overview of what we're doing here. Um, you saw this run where it visits the URL, fills it in, clicks everything. And the end result, of course, is that it fills it out in the browser like this. And so now I'm just going to uncomment out this other test. And we don't need this sleep. We're not using it anymore. We're not slowing it down. And we can see that both of these tests are going to run async. Compilation error on line 17. We have a sleep. Oh, it's using a sleep. We got rid of it. And so it has opened up a browser. It's tried to find a dot puppy, but there are no puppies. So the reason why, expected to find three visible elements that match the CSS dot puppy. So let's open up our template, puppy index dot HTML. How the heck did it not find our puppies? So the reason why is that the puppy apparently class equals puppy. We want for every time we render a puppy here, we want to show we want to throw a dot puppy on the page. So what we're going to do is let me show you the browser here. What we're going to do is so that this test can pass is, hey, we visit this URL and we want to see that there's three puppies because we created three puppies with our puppy fixture here. So on this page, we've got about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven puppies. And we want to throw a puppy class on this element. So for each one of these, we're going to throw a puppy class in the HTML. So we're going to make our test fail by only adding two puppies to the database. Add our puppy class here. We're going to run our test. And it should fail saying, hey, you wanted three, but there's only two. So boom, it's inspecting. There's only two puppies in the database. The test fails because it found three, but only two of them were there. So now we add our third puppy. We run the test again. We see three puppies. The test passes. Now we make all of our tests headless by adding headless true. Now we're not going to see a Chrome browser. And it's going to run, let's run both of our tests. Run both of our tests, async. And now we have Wallaby completely set up. And uh, this is how you do it. This is how you set up Wallaby. Remember, feature case, this is the most important part of this presentation because uh, getting this set up is not obvious. So go ahead and use that code and get yourself testing with Wallaby. Cheers.